What do you uh, think of Pit? Um, Pit can eat. <laughs> I hate Pit. Eat <laughs> Pit. Yeah. Screw him. I hate Pit. Yeah, I don't have nothing good to say about him myself, man. Okay. Uh, eat. Okay. I don't know if we can say that, but everyone's saying it. What do you think of Pit? Eat. Yeah. What do you think of Pit? I think that Pitt is the worst team in college football. What do you think of West Virginia? Absolutely hate them. Yeah. Dog doo doo. Inbreds. What did you say? Oh. Inbreds. He, he said inbreds. <laughs> say it again so I don't miss it. Inbreds. 13-9. That everyone says 13-9. That's just like that's that's one of the go-tos now, right? Yes, that's one of the go-tos. We knocked them out of the national championship game. Okay. Can't we just all be friends? West Virginia and Pitt united, no? No. We appreciate them as human beings, but at the end of the day, it's us against them. It's West Virginia against Pitt. At the end of the day, we're just always going to hate them. Eat Pitt. Eat Pitt. He said it right. We were at 13-9 in 2007. That's all we need to say. 13-9, Mountaineers. 13-9. That comes up a lot. I bet, yeah. I bet it does. Yes, as it should. Could we make a world where Pitt fans and West Virginia fans are friends? I don't think so. I don't see one. Do you see one? No. No. What do you think of Pitt? Pitt, oh, they can eat I ain't even gonna lie, they can eat What do you think of West Virginia? Uh, I can't use words in this that I think about West Virginia. I was at the West Virginia game last week and I asked West Virginia fans about Pitt and they did use the words. Yes. So I'm giving you permission to use the words if you want to. F West Virginia. Okay. Uh, are, you are you shocked? Are you shocked by? Are you sh no. Are you ready? Are you shocked by that? Are you ready for the brawl? Are very, you very, very rarely in life do you have high expectations for something and then it fully delivers. But that's what just <laughs> happened. That was tremendous. <laughs> oh, I got up at six o'clock in the morning to drive to both those games, and then after having all those people say those things, I was like, that was worth it. So that's ball, man. I'm trying to bring the North together, but there are some things that you, it's never going to happen. Yeah, I don't think so. Not yeah. for this one. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's that's it. That's our backyard brawl preview. What's your pick? No, I'm sorry. We're actually going to talk. <laughs> uh, who's, who swore the best in that? Um, we also did talk to, I talked to Eli Holstein after the Pitt Cincinnati game last week, and we ran a little bit of that on the Saturday show, like specific to that game. But also this is just one of those, even Neil Brown, the West Virginia coach talked about it this week. Just the idea of everybody knows you can tell that Pitt has completely transformed itself offensively with the hire of offensive coordinator, Cade Bell and bringing in Eli Holstein, the Alabama transfer quarterback. So let's talk about how Eli Holstein got to Pitt. And, and again, this is a little bit of preview. What to expect of this offense now in week three against West Virginia. This is an amazing story for you. I mean, I think a lot of people know it. Nate Yarnell is coming out of spring is like, okay, he's kind of going to be the guy. And then clearly you did some stuff in August to put yourself in this situation. When did you really begin to believe that you might be the starting quarterback for this team? Uh, once I got healthy, you know, the entire spring I had a lingering hamstring injury and I wasn't able to, I wasn't hundred percent. I wasn't be able to play football like I wanted to, so, you know, during the fall or during the summer, really, you know, just getting out there, working out with the guys during the fall, fall camp and everything. I kind of got a lot more comfortable with yeah. coach bell, with the guys out there. You know, I, I ended up really believing, you know, Hey, this is going to be my team at some point. You know, I need to play like it. Okay. So why are you here? Like, it is like an amazing, <laughs> When we're like looking at Pitt and it's like, Eli Holstein transferred to Pitt. What was it about this program that when you're leaving Alabama, and I'm sure you had everybody coming after you, why did you decide this was the place for you? I just knew it was a great fit, great city, great people, great coaching staff. You know, getting Coach Bell was a big part of it. Um, when he got there, they called me or whatever, talked about their offense, and I knew it was something that I wanted to play in. And uh, having a defensive-minded head coach, you know, like I did at uh, Alabama, you know, I feel like it's a great thing because, you know, I know my defense is always going to play well. They're always going to have my back, you know, and when you pair that together with a, a mind, offensive mind like Cade Bell is when good things happen. You just did a little Nick Saban, Pat Narduzzi thing right there. Oh, yeah. That That's pretty cool. I do think it's really cool that Pat Narduzzi, as a defensive-minded, old-school head coach, is embracing this offense and what what Coach Bell wants to do. do. Is it like easy for him? Do you ever feel him like, oh, I don't know about this? Because like it, it's a it's a tough transformation. Yeah, he's he's definitely over there watching our offense every practice, making sure we're you know 
doing the little things right, you know, making sure we're over there going to have a successful offense. But, you know, he's he's really let Coach Bell do whatever he wants. You know, he trusts Coach Bell. He trusts us. You know, I mean, because Coach Bell's put up a lot of points uh, wherever he has been. And, you know, like we did last week, we put up a lot of points, you know, and this week we, we made plays when we needed to. Uh, so Coach Dews has full faith in us, and we got faith in him and on that defense. It's just watching what, what this offense needs to be. It, it needs like the point guard, right? It needs the guy who's going to understand, see it, think quick. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you think your skill sets match up with what this offense needs in a quarterback? You know, when I, when I see somebody open, I'm not going to think twice. I'm just going to give them the ball. I wasn't really doing that in the first half, uh, that, and that, that's on me. I was trying to think too much. You know, with that three high safety defense that they play, I was trying to force things. You know, I wasn't just taking what they give me. Uh, and in that second half, I ended up doing that. You know, check the ball down, you know, throw a two-yard route, and, you know, Desmond Reed takes it 70 yards. You know, just little things like that uh, just made a big difference today. Okay. And you're a little – you're comfortable moving around, right? You'll get out of the pocket, make – look at the little smile, like, yeah, I can make some throws on the run. How comfortable is that for you? I've done that ever since I was little. You know, I've been able to run, move around a little bit, and I know – it's not there, you know, go get it myself. You know, there's a couple of times, especially with the, with, you know, them only playing with three down linemen. If it's not there, you know, Coach Bell told me, hey, check down or run. Check down's not there, take off and run. You know, so I was able to get some 10 yard gains, some big gains, whatever that kept the drive going. Yeah. And, and just like what, it's only two games in. And, and I think anytime there's a new system, you're new, the coach is new, Desmond is new, Poppy's new, right? I mean, it's gonna, it takes some time mm -hmm. sometimes. But like, what do you see in the potential for this offense? If you guys are able to pull off a comeback like this and play a second half like this in week two, what could this be by October and November? It's, it's going to be special. You know, we're, we haven't really put that to, uh, game together like we want to against a good team. Uh, we got, like last week, you know, we put up 55 points or whatever, but we felt like we left out 21 points out there. You know, just the little things like that. Once we get these thing, with this thing rolling or whatever, it's gonna it's gonna be a lot of fun, and Pittsburgh's gonna love it. That's what I want this show to be. That's that's I want this show to be swearing and ball talk. Is that fair? Um, wait, we didn't. We lost Bill. Say that again, Bill. Sorry, Are you in favor of was swearing my, and still, ball talk? I was still muted. Yes, that is my kind of show. Yeah. Yeah, swearing and ball talk. We'll make a t-shirt of that too. All right, so we talked to Eli Holstein. We talked to fans. Let's talk to each other about this game. It's at Pitt. It is the 107th Backyard Brawl. Again, like we said, it's like, hey, back in the day, we used to play each other. Uh, Pitt leads this series 62-41-3. to three. They're only 75 miles apart. 1943 to 2011, they played every year. Um, Pitt is off to a good start. West Virginia is off to a goofy start. Neil Brown, the Penn State loss is still lingering for them. For them. In week one, Neil Brown said the last rivalry game we were in, we did not show up that this is like West Virginia has to shake this. They have to use the the terrible performance against Penn State in some kind of positive way. They can't let it drag down their season. We did not participate at a very high level. So we're thankful for an opportunity to get back in the arena. Um, do you think they will? Like, do you like do you is this going to be the real West Virginia? I, I feel like I do not have a read on this game because I do not have a read on how West Virginia is going to respond. They played an FCS team last week and their offense seemed to come around a little bit. Right. I'm not sure how Pitt's going to respond after a great comeback win on the road against Cincinnati. Like I, I don't know how either of these two teams are going to come out. Yeah. It's a little, it's a little tough to put your finger on. I think, I think I, I, I believe we will see um, closer to the real, real West Virginia than what we saw against Penn State, which I think is basically just saying like a, a better version of Garrett Green, right? Garrett Green was awful against Penn State. I, I think he'll play better in this game against a pit defense that that's not as good as as Penn State's is. But yeah. I think the Albany game probably helped Garrett Green shake off a little whatever he had to shake off and and kind of lock back in a little bit. So I, I think I think that'll be better. I just don't. I, I still I, I don't know about West Virginia's defense. I, I, in particular, I don't know about the secondary. Like that, that to me is more of an, a long-term issue than an early season kind of we're trying to figure things out issue. So I, I think it's going to be close only because I'm kind of with you and not really knowing exactly what we're going to get from either of these teams. But I, I think the secondary issues for West Virginia are what's going to provide the opportunity for Pitt to win the game. And I, West Virginia knows those are real. Like they're not happy with how that's happened. They got to play the ball better in the air. Um, Tenth year overall for Pat Narduzzi and Neil Brown as head coaches. For Narduzzi, it's all at Pitt. For Neil Brown, it started at Troy. It's year six at West Virginia. Narduzzi, 67 and 50 as a head coach. Neil Brown, 67 and 46 as a head coach. I, th I thought that was interesting. And again, in the name of 
playing this game. We appreciate that this rivalry is valued. They are playing again next year. They're taking three years off and then Mm -hmm. coming back in 2029. And I think there's a long, complicated discussion. I think in the end, for most teams, the best non-conference schedule anymore is a geographic rival that matters, a big-time national game, and then an easy win, right? That's the best schedule. West Virginia Pitt, so the three years they're not playing, West Virginia's playing Bama in 26 Mm -hmm. and 27, and it's like, I don't know, you're mad? They're not going to play Pitt because they're playing Bama. I think they should play both, but I get it. And then in 2028, they're playing Tennessee in Charlotte in a one-off, which is like, okay. So it's not like West Virginia is not playing Pitt and then is hiding, but I do hope they can get to an every year thing. Neil Brown talked about it this year, uh, this week, excuse me. Like it should be every year. It's, it's close to every year. They are prioritizing it. So let's just enjoy it while we have it, man. Let's have a great backyard brawl on Saturday. Did you also see Neil Brown saying that he, he wishes West Virginia could get out of the Alabama series this week. Oh no. He said that. Why? Yeah, he no, doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't want to play it. He doesn't want to play it. Yeah. Well, the whole point of playing it is that Nick Saban's from West Virginia and then he retired. So right. that, that Nick, so Nick Saban point? and Joe Manchin, it's like the Saban Manchin game. And yeah. now Saban's gone. So now you're just gonna have Joe Manchin walking around being like, Hey, excited. So I don't <laughs> know. I hope they don't get out of it, but I mean, I think it's great for West Virginia to play Alabama. I think that's awesome. But you do have to prioritize this rivalry. I have West Virginia 38-34, but I think it could go either way. Yep, I have Pitt 35-31. I also think it could go either way, and I think it's going to be a relatively high-scoring game. 